I found a museum all around shoes. Beep, beep. One rainy day in Florence, Italy. Mike and I were out walking around, doing a little window shopping. And we bumped into Ferragamo Shoe Museum. Let's go inside. <laughs> Museum Salvatore Ferragamo. I wonder if a security guard is wearing Ferragamos. All right, going in, down some stairs into the red reception area. Must be a wait. Wow, there's a lot more here than I ever thought. I didn't know he was a shoemaker to the stars, and that's how he really got started back in the 1920s in Hollywood, California. During his time in California, Ferragamo gained a loyal following amongst Hollywood elite, crafting custom shoes for stars like Marilyn Monroe, Audrey Hepburn, and Greta Garbo. His association with celebrities helped elevate his brand's status and visibility. Okay, a little. Just love all these shoes that he made for Marilyn Monroe. And we go to the next room. Uh -huh. Within these exhibit rooms, the museum unravels the story behind the man who revolutionized footwear, captivating hearts and souls alike with his unparalleled creativity and wavering commitment to excellence. Where tradition meets innovation and every step is a testament to unparalleled craftsmanship. <laughs> Just love the rhinoceros nose that he was inspired by. <laughs> wow, that made a pretty cool looking pair of shoes. That's funny. Oh, that's a lot of shoes. That's pretty. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Ferragamo experimented with various materials, including cork, raffia, and even fish skin, even toad skin, to create distinctive and comfortable footwear. His commitment to quality and comfort set his shoes apart in the fashion world. And he came up with some pretty interesting designs. <laughs> wow, looks like Adam and Eve, I wonder. What did he use on this? Skin hides. Very unusual. Okay, these are skins from toads. Wow. Toad skin. Toad skin. Toad skin. Wow. I loved seeing all the various tools that a cobbler would use back then. And love all the different heels, how he adorned them with rhinestones and different types of skins. Ah, uh, the beautiful, infamous glass bottom shoe. Just feel like there needs to be a fish in there. So the next room was my favorite room. I could have stayed in there for, for hours. <laughs> Mike was like, let's go. <laughs> they had a movie playing. It was looping again and again. and. I would miss parts of it because I'd be looking around so I would stay and watch it again. But it went through a lot of clips from the 1920s and the 30s of all the movies that he worked on. And I just, I don't, they were just so cool. I loved seeing the old time cars and the buildings. And I lived in Los Angeles almost 30 years. So I knew a lot of the landmarks and it was just so neat to see them from almost a hundred years ago because the 20s and 30s were in 1920 we're in 2024 so it's literally was almost a hundred years ago and to see how it changed so much in the past 90 hundred years wow but i love this room
I love seeing these old photos from the Egyptian theater. Wow, what they looked like back then. I love these shoes. Like an upside down pyramid. How creative. They don't look too comfortable. Also, I think he did shoes there for Ben-Hur. And, wow. So many of the big time great movies looks like he was involved in. So Hollywood was at its busiest. I know in the right when the talkies started, it's the late 20s, and this they were shooting out film after film, and Ferragamo was right in the middle of it. So in the 20s, and then it went 30s and the 40s, but he left in 1927 and established his company in Florence, Italy, bought the building where this museum is now as the headquarters and where his main boutique was. And that's where the museum is now. I love this digital book. I love the craftsmanship of it. And I love just watching it. All those great photos and the timeline of his life and his career. In 1960, Salvatore Ferragamo passes away on August 7th at the age of 62, leaving behind a thriving fashion empire and a legacy of innovation and craftsmanship. The company continues to thrive under the leadership of his widow, Wanda Ferragamo, and their children, expanding its product offerings and global presence. Salvatore Ferragamo remains a leading luxury fashion brand, known for its sophisticated footwear, accessories, and ready-to-wear collections. The company continues to honor Ferragamo's legacy by preserving his commitment to quality, craftsmanship, and innovation. His life chronicle is a testament to his remarkable talent, entrepreneurial spirit, and enduring legacy as a pioneer in the world of fashion. So the museum has tours. I was looking on Viator to see what kind of tours there were, but we were... Uh, kind of having scheduling problems. So when we were walking by, we're like, there it is, let's just go in. So the tours would have been really interesting to kind of really get the, uh, not have to read so much, right? So, but to really get the stories. So a lot of tour guides in Italy, they have such great stories. I don't know, if, I hope they're all true, but. 
But it was just really fun to go in and take a look there and hope you can make it to Italy one day and go take a tour of that. Also, we have the Gucci Museum. I did a video on that earlier. And next I'll be doing my fabric stores that I found in Florence. A lot of beautiful ones. Pretty expensive fabric in Florence, much more than in Rome. But now, Mike and I continued on to check out the rest of our window shopping. A lot of stores on this one street. I can't remember the street's name, but I know it's right near Ferragamo's. And Alexander McQueen. Если вы смотрели эту Гуччи, наверное, вы увидели, как семейство... Look at this wall. I hope you enjoyed this quick tour of Florence, Italy and the Ferragamo Museum. So be sure to look for my next videos coming out on the fabric stores in Florence. I'm sure you're going to love them. See you in the next video. Beep, beep.